Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this shotcut tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do keyframes, both simple keyframes and more advanced keyframes. Now I'm going to primarily be showing you how to do this in video, but you can also apply keyframes to both images and audio. And so at the end of this video, I'll briefly touch upon audio keyframes as well. And so the first thing you want to do is pull some clips down to your timeline. And right now I have two video clips. And if you notice on here in the bottom left, there's two different tabs. There's the timeline tab and there's also the keyframe tabs. And if you notice, there's nothing here yet. And you could also go here to the top of your menu and you could choose keyframes and go to the keyframe view or timeline to go to the timeline view. So what we want to do now is add a filter. So you want to make sure that you have the clip selected that you want to add a filter on. We'll go here to filters and go to plus sign. We'll add a simple text filter to start off. I'm going to go ahead and add this one right here. So now we have our text on top of our video. And so now if you go to your keyframes tab, you'll now see a different keyframes view. So now we can go ahead and start adding our keyframes. And so the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and change this text to something a little bit more welcoming and a little bit more cooler. And I'm going to choose the Sega logo. One of my favorites. Love Sega. So now we have this. And so what I've effectively done here is I've added this filter of this text throughout the entire clip that I've selected. So if I go down here and I press play, you'll notice that this text is available for the entirety of the clip. So if I go back to my timeline, this text will appear throughout this entire clip that I've selected. Now, if you actually want to see the view of both your timeline and your keyframes at the same time, the easiest way to do that is you would go up here to this keyframes. You would hold down the left button on your mouse. And now you could drag this around to different parts of your project space. So if you go here on the left, you'll have them side by side. You can move this over. So now you can see both your clip keyframe view and also your entire project timeline. So this might make things easier for you, especially if you have more complex projects. And if you wanted to go back to the default view, you could hold this down again and move it over on top of this timeline view. And now it's combined. So we're going to stick on this view, but that's how you would actually have both views together at the same time. And so as you can see there, we have our new filter. But you know what? If you'd wanted to have this text only appear at certain parts in your video. Well, if you'll notice on the right and to the left, there is a green color here and a right color here. So this will allow you to adjust how long the filter or where the filter is actually at. So if I did this and I would move my playhead back here. So what's going to happen is it's only going to appear in this area. And so that is one way you can do that. And so in this case, this kind of is a keyframe because it's only available on these frames and then it disappears. But now you have some other options. So this is where simple keyframes come in. So let's say, for example, at least on this filter, I wanted to move it up here in the center. So I could do that by just moving it up here. And once again, throughout the entirety of this clip, or at least on this portion of this clip, it will appear and then it will disappear. But if you notice here, there's two like round icons right here. Okay. So they're like handlebars. So all you would do is if you move it to the right, you'll notice something really different and this one to the left. So now if I go back to the beginning of this, what you notice now is that it slowly moves up to the center. And so now you've created your very first keyframe, but not only that, it's also an animated keyframe. And so this is the simple keyframe method. And if you notice, by the time it gets to the end, it'll go the reverse route and it will go back to its original position. And if you actually extended this further, it will go slower. And if you decreased it, it will get to that position faster. So if you go here, it went up way faster. So what it's effectively doing is it's starting off at zero and it will slowly apply the new keyframe position or size or whatever variables that you had here. So that's how you would do simple keyframe. And you could have, you know, a lot of control over this. You control the timing. You could also control the length of this. 
And so that's how you would do a very simple keyframe. And it's also an animated keyframe as well. So now let's get into some more advanced keyframes. And so what I'm going to do is add another filter. So I'll go here to plus sign. And I'm going to add this rotating scale filter. So we have two different filters now. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this so then it doesn't appear. And we could focus on rotating scale. So the same principles apply here. You can adjust how long your actual filters are going to appear. And you could use this simple keyframe like we did before, or we could do the more advanced one. So let's go ahead and start with the simple one. So then we'll get used to that. So what I want to do is scale into my face. And let me move this back at the beginning. So this entire clip should be zoomed in. And I can use the simple keyframes as before. I could gradually get into that zoom view right there. And also at the same time, uh, I could add different X and Y sets as well. So I'm going to move it right there and move this right here. So kind of disorienting it right now. And I'm also going to rotate it too. So we just get a little crazy with this. But I just wanted to show you how simple keyframes can work to do some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> and so that's how you use the simple keyframes there. And this one is a more advanced filter. So you notice there's some additional options here. So if you want to reset everything, you go ahead and click on this for each one of them. You could reset that, reset here and here. And also here, we'll go ahead and just drag it back to where it was before. So everything's back to what it was before. But now, let's go ahead and add advanced keyframes. Now, not every filter will have this, but this one does. And the way you know that is you see these keyframe icons right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and start off with the scale one. I'll go ahead and add a keyframe here. And now there's an additional option. You see the scale options for this keyframe. And then we'll go ahead and add one for X and Y. Okay, you can add the rotation if you want, but I just want to keep things simple. So right now, we have keyframes right here at this part of our clip timeline. And we'll go ahead and add some additional keyframes here. So this is where I want to adjust things. So the first thing I want to do is scale in. And if you notice, things have changed. Now we have another keyframe. And you'll notice there is a curve up here. And we'll do something similar to X and Y. And this one won't be a curve. So we'll go right there. Yeah, it's going to look kind of weird, but there. All right. So we'll go back to the beginning. We'll press play. And it's going to gradually zoom in, or in that case, pretty quickly. Now, if you wanted to make that slower, you could move this around. Okay. So is the zoom in slower? And you could do the same thing for the X and Y as well. So now it's going to take a little longer to zoom in. And obviously, if you shorten this keyframe length, it'll be a lot quicker. So this is going to be like a super quick zoom right here. And it'll be very fast. Boom. And also, if you move this up, it zooms in. It increases the value, if you notice here. And if you pull things down, it a decrease the value right here. So if you go to that keyframe, you see the values right there. I'm going to move this up just a little bit more. And if you go to this keyframe, you see the values here. Okay. So that's what we have right here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to this zoom and look, and I'm going to extend this out just a little bit more. Okay. So that's how we set these keyframes. Now let's go ahead and add some other keyframes. So say, for example, you wanted to add a keyframe, let's just say like right here, right? And the thing is, you want to keep the same values as you had before without having to manually adjust this. So all you would need to do is double click on this, this value that you have the keyframe on, okay, right here, and then you press up. And when you do that, it'll add another keyframe with the exact same values that you have highlighted. So we'll do the same thing here, and we'll do the same thing here. 
and you see why this is important. So now we have the same values at this point. So what I want to do now at this keyframe, I want to go ahead and reset everything back to what it was. So we'll go ahead and use this right here. It'll reset to default. We'll do this one for the X and Y. So now what's going to happen is if we go back to the beginning, it's going to do all the adjustments, zoom in, then it's going to stay there, and then it's going to go back down. All right. So that's how you do more advanced keyframes. But there's going to be more to that than this. So right now, you probably notice that things are very abrupt. It just kind of goes fast because you can control the curves. Uh, that's what these are, the keyframe curves. So if you were to go here and click on a keyframe and you right click, you see something called keyframe type. The default is linear, meaning it's just a linear progression to the next keyframe. What I like to do is use smooth. Okay, and it really depends on what type of the project you're working on. But normally that's what I like. And so from this keyframe to this, it's smooth. And you can do this throughout. And you notice the icons look different. Linear is diamond. Smooth is circle. And then there's one more keyframe type. And I'll show you that here in a bit. And so we'll go smooth here. And we'll go smooth here. Okay, and I'm really only doing this for the zoom. You could do this to any of these other ones as well. And so if I play this now, the zoom is going to be smoother. And it might be hard to tell, but you could tell by these curves. Okay, so that's how that works. And there is one more keyframe type. So I'm going to go up even higher. So then you could see this. So if I were to go here to this keyframe, then I right click keyframe type, choose discrete it's going to abruptly just stop it's from one keyframe to another. And so if I were to play this, so it doesn't do anything, and then boom. <laughs> so that's pretty much like a hard cut. And the symbol here is a square. So if I go back here, we'll go ahead and change the keyframe type, go back to smooth. And I could do the same thing to each one of these keyframes if I were to choose discrete. So it's going to be a hard cut from one to another so it looks okay and then boom okay so you can kind of see how that works but for most people they're either going to choose keyframe type linear or smooth okay so you just have to play around and choose the one that works best for you and then the final thing with these advanced keyframes is you can also remove all the keyframes okay so first i'm going to show you how to remove individual keyframes and then i'll show you how to remove all of them so if you choose a keyframe, you can right click and choose remove, or you could choose this delete icon right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this keyframe right here. See, and so it removes that and you get the point. But if you want to remove keyframes entirely for this particular option, just click on this icon again, and it'll ask if you want to remove all the keyframes, yes. And now we don't have those keyframes anymore. And you can do the same thing to these other two. So that's how you could do more advanced keyframes. And then I said the final thing is, you know, if you want to reset everything, even if you remove the keyframes, it won't reset everything for you. It'll just remove the keyframes. And so you're still going to have to go up here and just reset everything this way. Or you could do it manually by putting in the values that you want. For serious YouTubers, check out TubeBuddy the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. And so the final thing I want to briefly cover is audio keyframes. And so I'm going to go back to my timeline view, go to playlist, and I'm going to drop an audio clip right down here in my timeline. And so now I have my audio selected. I'm going to go ahead and add a filter. And what I want to do is find something that allows me to adjust the volume. So gain in volume. So now we could go to our keyframe view. And it works pretty much the same as the video keyframes. So you could still do the simple keyframing or do the more advanced one. We're going to go ahead and do the more advanced one. So I'm going to go ahead and add keyframe. I'm going to move this right here. And then here I'm going to add another keyframe. And basically I'm going to lower the volume. Set up right there. And then here 
I'm going to increase the volume. And I'm also going to smooth things out. Keyframe type smooth. And we'll do the same thing here. And we'll do the same thing here. So let's go ahead and listen to this with the keyframes. Go back to the beginning, press play, then it lowers, and then it should go back up. So that's how you can quickly apply keyframes to audio clips, and you can use these same principles for images as well. And so that's my tutorial on how you can apply both simple keyframes and advanced keyframes within Shotcut. If you actually had any thoughts on this, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you didn't want to see more of my shortcut tutorials, tips, and tricks, I do have a playlist. I'll leave that in the description as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me, and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group, where you'll get access to additional videos and content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.